Welcome to Pleasant Green's virtual worship services. We're glad that you are coming in to share with us on today. Brothers and sisters, we're going to give you just a few moments. We're going to give our pleasant parishioners just a few moments to log in so that we can worship together uh, in the name of God. Uh, as you come in, hit your emoji, uh, hit your thumbs up, your hands or your whatever emoji to let us know that you are uh, present with us virtually. We are glad that you are with us. We are glad that you are with, with us. Again, uh, this welcome to Pleasant Green's virtual worship services on this morning. Uh, we're going to just give you a, just a moment or two so that you can come on in. Come on in, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG. We are glad that you have decided to worship with us on this morning. I know that we are, uh, we've yet to come back uh, to share with each other in person, but just be patient with us. I promise you, we will back, we will be back together uh, soon. Wait a minute, Princeton, I need your help with this worship service. Y'all, this is Princeton. He's gonna help me with the call to worship. So brothers and sisters, we want to, enter into our call to worship at this time. Uh, the word of God says, he's excited. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statues, and I will observe it until the end. Give me my understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. Let, let your spirit lead me into a level path. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by God's hand. What does the Lord require of you? But you do justice and to love uh, kindness and to walk humbly with your God. There is a way that seems right to a person, but its end is the way to death. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your paths and make your straight uh, make straight your ways. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your future uh, and your welfare and not for harm and to give you hope in the future. Brothers and sisters, you have been called into our virtual service. Now, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, help us praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, again, we thank God for you uh, tuning in to Pleasant Green's virtual worship services. You could have uh, tuned in anywhere across the globe, but you decided to tune in with us on today. Brothers and sisters, if you would, uh, if you'd allow me to sing just a verse or two. There are just a few indispensable pieces of worship uh, that we have been missing since we have not been in per person. There are a few indispensable pieces to worship. Uh, that is scripture, uh, that is prayer, and then that is also singing. So if you would, I'm not the best singer, but if you just help me sing this wherever you are, I will be grateful. In our African-American heritage hymnal, uh, it is uh, hymn number 430, hymn number 430. And it is something that is perhaps familiar with most of us. It is what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a pre- 
privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in now we pause for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for your tremendous power. God, we thank you for your providence and God, we thank you for all that you have done. And God, we pray now that you have mercy upon us as we enter into this space of worship. God, help us in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray now that you be a light uh, unto our pathways and a lamp uh, unto our feet. Lord God, we pray now that this word brings direction. Lord God, that this word brings inspiration, encouragement, uh, admonition, and admonishment, God. We pray that this word strengthens our lives. We pray, Lord God, that this word... Uh, causes us to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you have mercy upon the pleasant parishioners and the partners of PG. Uh, as we have not been together, God, we ask that you keep our bond strong. Lord God, let your sheep hear your voice. And when you call and reconvene us in the presence of you in in-person worship, Lord God, let the parishioners come. Uh, and Lord God, let those who are unsaved say, what must I do to be saved? God, we pray that uh, we are uh, a church that continues to um, complete uh, the Great Commission Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in God's sight. Uh, o oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, let us all say amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would um, uh, go with me, we in our Bible study, we have been in the book of Job. We've been in the book of Job and I Definitely appreciate those of you who have been very faithful uh, in um, sharing in our Bible study. Uh, for me, uh, Job has been very impactful. Job has been very impactful. One of the most impactful scriptures uh, out of Job uh, comes out of uh, Job, the 13th chapter. This kind of sums up the chapter or the book of Job for me. Uh, this is the most applicable piece uh, in the book of Job for me. And I pray that you can get something out of it. Turn to your Bibles, turn to your Bibles, turn to your Bibles to the book of Job, uh, the 13th chapter. Amen, the 13th chapter. And we want you to read uh, the 15th verse, Job 13. Uh, in my spiritual imagination, I hear some pages turning. So I'm going to allow you just a little bit of time to get to uh, Job. Amen. Job 13. Job 13 and 15. Job 13 and 15. You can type amen, you can throw your thumbs up, you can give a heart emoji, a like emoji, just let me know that you are present. Amen. There you will find words similar to this. I am reading uh, for its um, poetic impact. I'm reading from the King James Version, and it reads like this. Though God slay me. Well, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. 
but I will maintain my own ways before God. I want to read that one more time for your hearing. Though God slay me, yet will I trust in God, but I will maintain my own ways before God. And brothers and sisters, just for the time that we share together, I want to use as uh, a title, Trusting God in Troubled Times. Trusting God in Troubled Times. Brothers and sisters, how many of us know and realize that we live in uh, some very difficult and different times? We live in some very difficult and different times. As a matter of fact, our world is changing. Our world is shifting. We're living in an age of new things and new technology, uh, new value systems, new moralities, and new people with new knowledge. It's an age, <laughs> um, uh, furthermore, we're living in an age uh, perhaps where there are even plastic people who are superficial and artificial. As a matter of fact, I was scrolling uh, through uh, social media uh, and I saw a young woman uh, who began uh, to put on her cosmetics. And by the end of uh, her show, she was an entirely different woman. She had uh, a different hair. She had different eyelashes. Uh, uh, different lips and different teeth. Uh, she was a different person. Uh, I would push further to say we still we live in a world where if you are a person who does not like your body makeup, you can go uh, and purchase you a new posterior or a, a new bosom. Uh, we live in a world of artificial and superficial people. And many times it makes that hard for us to trust. As a matter of fact, I was watching botched. Women are not the only people uh, who have experienced this. There was a man who uh, wanted some triceps and biceps and he wanted abs. So he went to a plastic surgeon and he got abs and he got uh, triceps and biceps without doing one day of push-ups or calisthenics. And brothers and sisters, this person had artificial, an artificial body. Brothers and sisters, we live in this world where full of artificial people, superficial people, which causes us to get to a place where it is hard for us to trust. It is hard for us to trust. Brothers and sisters, I recall when Barack Obama gave his inauguration speech in Washington, D.C., in front of around two million people on a cold day in January, he used the word trust. Trust was in his very first sentence. When he brought up the issues of trust, he was making a lot of sense because trust has been in short supply not only in Washington, but trust has been in short supply around the world. Brothers and sisters, uh, in the business world, we have experienced an erosion of trust. Uh, institutions and executives are that which have been viewed as solid have been called into question. Brothers and sisters, even in uh, in Washington, we notice that the politics uh, seats are being sold. And brothers and sisters, we live in a time where trust uh, is very scarce. Even in the home, in marriages, brothers and sisters, uh, what statistics share with us, infidelity is moving to an all-time high. We live in a world we're brothers and sisters where we are living with a lack of trust. And unfortunately, brothers and sisters, even in the environment of the church, 
Uh, it is unfortunate that we even there are experiencing trust issues. Uh, in recent years, I'm sure that you've seen many scandals where many tele uh, preachers have misused the finances of the church. We are living in a world of mistrust. And as a result, the world is in a jam. The nation is in a mess. The home is in trouble and the individual is in torment. Stress is shattering the lives of so many people. Everyone is uptight and tension is the order of the day. Loneliness and fear have not gone on vacation. No wonder we find ourselves in the midst of a postmodern trust crisis. All of us, brothers and sisters, are experiencing trust issues. So the question becomes, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, who can we trust? Who can we trust? Brothers and sisters, uh, I can recall one of the front covers uh, of Oprah Magazine asked the question, who can you trust with your life, your money, your secrets, your man, and most of all, your hair? Well, brothers and sisters, Oprah had, uh, Oprah is someone who uh, I can place my trust in. Is Oprah someone who I can place my trust in in tough times? Brothers and sisters, who can we trust? Who can we trust? One thing I know, brothers and sisters, that as we consider this thing called life, uh, that person that we can trust is God. God is the only constant in our lives. God is the only immutable in our lives. God is the only one who is unchanging and the only one that we can trust. The one thing that I know that as we consider our text uh, is that Job demonstrated practical leadership in very troublesome and rough times. As a matter of fact, as we consider this book of Job, Job epitomized uh, trust in very difficult times. I wish I had a praying church here, brothers and sisters. It, it's, it's so easy to think, brothers and sisters, uh, that a story as old as Job's is familiar to everyone. But it may uh, not be familiar to you. As a matter of fact, it may be new to you. For those uh, of us who perhaps may not have uh, read Job's life, allow me just a moment or two just to bring you up to speed about what was going on in Job's life. If you walk with me uh, through uh, the biblical cinema, you can see that overnight, Without warning, Job's world came tumbling down. Uh, Job's world came tumbling down in such a devastating way that he tore up the very clothes that he was wearing. Uh, in a one fell swoop, he was rendered childless by a traumatic and tragic situation. And then after being stricken, by terrible sickness, Job was tormented by his wife who suggested that he needed to curse God and die. He was sneered by all three of his friends. In fact, his three friends informed him that he must have done something wrong or God would not be punishing him. So they called him a phony Hypocrite. Job was facing some tough situations in life. Life was a difficult thing and unfair for Job. Job, brothers and sisters, and just like Job, uh, we too can go through uh, some things in life. Brothers and sisters, just like Job, we can go from fortune to misfortune. Our lives can go from calm to calamity. Our lives can go from 
blessings to cursing. Brothers and sisters, life is filled with swift transitions. We can go from acceptance to rejection. We can go from prosperity to poverty all in uh, one moment. We can be up today and some folks said down tomorrow, but I came to share with you that you can be up today and down today as well. No one can argue the fact that life is punctuated with hardships, hard aches and headaches and hard breaks. Brothers and sisters, Job sunk lower than any other person, yet he epitomized, this is what blesses me, that although Job sunk lower than any other person in the biblical narrative, he accentuated or epitomized trust in difficult times. He epitomized trust in difficult times. He illustrated to us as believers what it means to trust God in difficult times. And he does this by demonstrating consistency in character. Consistency in character. Job's life is a great example of maintaining a solid trust in God no matter what the circumstances are. Brothers and sisters, pleasant parishioners, partners of PG, this is practical advice for us because he gives us and illustrates for us uh, uh, how we should maintain a solid trust in God no matter what the circumstances are. So brothers and sisters, I know that you all have some questions for me. I know that you have some questions for me. Uh, what, what, what was it about Job that enabled him uh, to overcome his insurmountable problems? I hear somebody saying, well, Reverend Letcher, what is it uh, that made Job uh, so victorious when his world was falling apart what was it about Job when Job experienced undeserved suffering? How was he able to make sense out of his suffering? Thank you for asking me those very purposeful question, pleasant parishioners. I'm glad you asked me those questions. Well, well, I'll respond to you by saying this. I just believe that the answers to these very important and viable questions are found within the biblical text and the narrative of Job. First of all, if you walk with me, brothers and sisters, this is what I see that emerges from uh, the text. As we look in this particular pericope, first of all, I see, uh, brothers and sisters, we must have unwavering trust in God during the most difficult setbacks of life. Y'all, y'all, you, you ought to thumbs up that. Somebody ought to say something about that. You've got to have unwavering trust in God during the most difficult times. You ought to tell somebody who you're watching this particular uh, airing with. You ought to tell them that you've got to have unwavering trust in God during the most difficult times. I know you're asking me, well, Reverend Letcher, how do you know that? Where are you getting this from? Where are you drawing your water from? Well, this is where I'm drawing my water from. In the first sentence of Job 13 and 15, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, it has been interpreted in various ways. Y'all walk with me and I get out of your way in just a minute. The scholarly variations of this text, uh, notwithstanding this undoubtedly, uh, this is undoubtedly one of the most famous lines in the book of Job. Readers of the King James Version of the Bible in every generation since 1611 have heard in their minds Job make this heroic declaration of faith. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The word slay means to assassinate, 
brothers and sisters, the word sounds uh, rather violent. Contextually and grammatically, of course, Job did not mean literally. He didn't mean that God kills him literally because when he stated this, he was still alive. He was using strong language because uh, he felt as though God had struck him dead. In other words, brothers and sisters, Job was coming into the presence of God and Job was keeping it 100. Job was keeping it real with God. Job was keeping it A100. And brothers and sisters, I'm sharing with you sometimes in life, it's okay not to be okay. He was coming before God and he was sharing his laments with God. Lord, I'm suffering. Things are not all right with me. But the blessing about what Job said is though you slay me, though I go through hard aches and hard breaks, though I go through pain, though I go through problems on my job, though I have debt that I can't see my way through, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. That is important, brothers and sisters, that as we are going through life's troubles, it is important to still trust God. We only see Job sitting down on a heap of ashes. We see Job scraping off the corruption of uh, lingering sores all over his body. But Job saw nothing to cheer him up. Sometimes life gets like that. It seems like we have nothing to comfort us uh, or inspire us. Job saw nothing to light his way through the night but doubt and sorrow. But before he continued in his long night of pain, like a flash of lightning, he received a revelation about his painful predicament. He declared and demonstrated that he was going to place his unwavering trust in God during the most difficult setback of his life. Job 1 and 21 states, naked, I came into this world and naked, I will return thither. The Lord gave, I feel like tuning right now. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Bless be the name of the Lord. In other words, brothers and sisters, nothing could alter Job's uh, affirmation in God. Nothing could alter Job's trust in God, even though things didn't seem well. Nothing, brothers and sisters, could alter his firm belief, his confidence, his honesty, and brothers and sisters, nothing could alter his belief in a God of integrity and reliability. Nothing could alter his uh, faith in a God of justice in the face of injustice. Brothers and sisters, he trusted God even though there was seemingly no reason to trust. He demonstrated his trusting relationship. And this is how he do it. This is how he does it, brothers and sisters. Play, pay a careful attention to the text. He does that, brothers and sisters, by worshiping. Tell somebody that he continued to worship. He worshiped. He did not wallow uh, all day long. He did not wail. He did not stay in a place of, of woe is me. Instead, he began to worship. And I think that's a word for somebody that is experiencing some tough times. Brothers and sisters, you need to trust God by learning how to worship God, even in the midst of fail. He worshiped God. He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. I, I, I hope I have a praying virtual church 
this morning. Brothers and sisters, the, the word said, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, as we take a look or as we consider what this word means, blessed in the Hebrew, blessed means to recognize God. Even though you're going through things, brothers and sisters, we need to still recognize that God is yet and still present. It means to recognize God. In the Hebrew, it means to kneel before God. It means to praise God in spite of our trials and difficulties. Brothers and sisters, he worshiped God. He, he, it, uh, it, it, to bless God means to speak a good word about God. Uh, brothers and sisters, in the pit of his suffering, Job spoke well of God in spite of his trials and difficulties. And brothers and sisters, do you know Job overcame those attacks of Satan and the difficulty in his situation by worshiping God. He trusted God without any reservation whatsoever. And he, there is something special. There is something transformational about you and I worshiping God. Brothers and sisters, there is, God sees us. And when he sees us worshiping, God does something transformational in our lives. Look at Job. He fell down upon the ground and he worshiped God. And I might I uh, suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that when you stumble and stagger, you've got to learn how to still worship God. When we get bad news and our bad news turns to worse news, we've got to learn how to worship God. When Satan wants to take you out with troubles and trials, we've got to learn how to worship God. When you desire to get back in in-person worship service and there's no acclimated date, you still got to learn how to worship God where you are. When others have buried you under judgment, of, under the judgment of failure, you got to learn how to worship God. I, I, I feel like preaching today. When you, brothers and sisters, are overwhelmed by the events and circumstances that are spinning out of control, you've got to learn how to worship God. When circumstances are beyond your control, you've got to learn how to worship God. You've got to learn how to worship God. Job said to us that no matter how harshly life uh, has treated him, uh, no matter how painful the disappointments were, no matter how rough the road he had traveled, no matter how poverty stricken he became, even if God decided to slay him, he was going to demonstrate a trusting relationship with God by worshiping God. Brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to trust God. And one of the ways that we trust God is worship God. Brothers and sisters, another thing that emerges from the text, we've got to have, un, uh, the first thing is we've got to have unwavering trust in God during the most difficult setbacks in life. But also, this is important to notice. Listen to this. Uh, you've got to turn, uh, you can turn your setbacks into a comeback by trusting in God's ability. You can turn your setbacks into comebacks uh, in trusting God's ability. Although things are not going well with you right now, I challenge you to trust in God's ability. He said, though thou slay me, yet will I trust him. I want us to look at the word yet. Look at it in your text. Look, look, look at it in the text. Though thou slay me, yet will I trust you. Yet means in spite of. Yet means in addition to or on top of it all. I will put my trust in.
in the Lord. It means in spite of your sickness that you're facing, I will put my trust in God, in addition to my child being locked up and him being at fault, I will still put my trust in God. On top of losing my job, I will put my trust in God. And after the word yet comes the affirmation and the determination that nothing can prevent Job from being righteous before God. I want to pause parenthetically and say, brothers and sisters, don't use your trouble to stop trusting God. Don't use your trouble to stop being righteous. Job was still righteous even in the presence of his trouble. Don't stop uh, logging in to worship because you're having trouble. Don't use an excuse uh, that you are going through things to stop acting righteous. God has still called you to be set apart from the world. God has still called you to walk a life worthy of the call by which you were called. God has still called you to be consecrated even though you face difficulties. And Job was not about to allow his trouble to cause him to act unrighteous before a holy God. Look at it again. Job's miserable setbacks in life were devastating. He was stripped of his wealth. You all know the story of Job. He was stripped of his children. He was stripped of his health. He was stripped of his friends. He was stripped of his status. He was stripped of his respect. He was stripped of a healthy relationship with his wife. Brothers and sisters, so the question uh, becomes is how does Job turn his miserable setback into a comeback? We need to look at the text again. It says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The New International Version gives us a new perspective on it, on what Job was trying to say. In the New International Version, brothers and sisters, it says, though he slay me, yet will I have hope in him. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, hope is an important thing. Job had what theologians uh, call existential hope. Existential hope is grounded in an experience in life upon which you can rely. In other words, out of your existential experience in the past, you have called on God and therefore he delivered you. You all know that existential hope, don't you? That when you called him when he was sick, he delivered you. You all remember that imaginary faith file that you have, brothers and sisters, that when you called on God, you prayed to God for help and he came. Brothers and sisters, all of us should rely on that existential hope in that if he did it once, he can do it again. Somebody said that God did it for them back then and he can do it for us right now. You got to rely on that existential hope since God delivered you back then. He can do it again. Uh, Victor Frankel, a psychiatrist and a Holocaust survivor, wrote about his experience in a Nazi concentration camp. He said, everything can be taken from a man, but one thing. Brothers and sisters, and that is the last of human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any set of given circumstances. In other words, brothers and sisters, everything can be taken from you besides your decision to have a good or a bad attitude about the circumstances that you are facing. Holding on to hope in the midst of suffering will help a person find significance in living. Having a sense of hope in life is necessary. 
I just share this with you pleasant parishioners as I rush with rapidity to my conclusion. Hope is important as water. Hope is as important to the believer is as water is to a fish. Hope is as vital to a believer as electricity is to a light bulb. Hope is as essential uh, to a believer is air as to a jumbo jet. Hope is basic to our lives. Brothers and sisters, we as believers, uh, we believe in a hope that will never fail. We believe in a hope uh, that science would be our helper and not our destroyer. We have, we believe in a hope uh, that a better day is coming in the morning. We have a hope that trouble won't last always. We have, we believe in a hope, uh, we have a hope that remains that when uh, you have the will to persist in spite of pessimism, brothers and sisters, to have hope means that you persist in spite of your discouragement. To have hope means that your hope, brothers and sisters, that you believe that there is a solution even though you don't see one. Brothers and sisters, let me define hope just a little bit better. One psychiatrist by the name of Eric Erickson, uh, uh, who advanced our understanding of the human psychological development, characterized hope as a trust or a confidence. In other words, an individual uh, through hope can endure until his or her change comes. Uh, if you don't believe in Eric Erickson, maybe you have a, a Sam Cook theology where it says that I know it's been uh, I, I know it, it's been a long time coming, but I know that a change will come. Hope does not accept the situation as is. Instead, it defies it defies the negative hope says that I refuse to accept the reality of my situation. Hope does not abandon its past, but hangs on until a change comes. Hope extinguishes anxiety. Hope includes active involvement by the individual towards the improvement of your health. Hope believes uh, that a turn for the better is on the way and God can change your circumstances. Can I tell you about God's hope? Can I tell you uh, about what hope in God has done for me? I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but all of the bumps on the road of my life has turned out to be a blessing to me. All of my failures uh, are still my teachers. All of my mistakes uh, are still my major professors. All of my defeats have been my victory. Holding on to hope involves the possibility of turning, turning your miserable setbacks into comebacks. I'm pressing toward my conclusion, but the last thing I'll share with you is today, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, faith in God produces trust. Faith in God produces trust. If you look at the text, walk with me through the text, Job was handed some bad news. So he had to face the hard times. But Job said, but I will maintain my own ways before him. He was basically saying, I will keep doing what I've been doing until my change comes. Every now and then, there will be or there will come a time when you have to ask yourself the following questions in the face of difficulties. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, do 
Do we give up because things are not going like I thought they would go? Do I quit because stuff is not changing? Or do I keep doing what I have been doing? And what he had been doing is trusting in God. In the end, we discover that Job's best days were still ahead of him. Why? Because ple pleasant parishioners, uh, he began or he continued to trust in God. What was, doing, what was Job doing during this time of sorrow and pain? He was maintaining his faith in God. Your faith in God during difficult times has the capacity to take you to another level. The only reason uh, why you haven't lost your minds is because your faith has taken or has given you the ability to trust God. Job was struggling because of his crisis. Sometimes a crisis can cause us to put our trust in something other than God. However, we don't need a four-leaf clover. We don't need a lucky rabbit's foot uh, to hang around our neck. What we need is an unwavering faith in God during a crisis or a difficult situation. Faith in God makes us depend on God and not others. The reason some of us are limited is because we have allowed other people to determine our outcome. We've allowed other folks to determine our outcome and we should never do that. We, we can't allow other folks to determine who we are by the labels that they put on us. Faith in God helps us to understand that other people do not have the final word regarding our lives, but it is God who decides who we are. What I like about Job is that Job refused to be identified by his labels. He refused to be identified by the labels that were put on him. He, his self-identity was not in the 7,000 sheep that he lost. His self-identity was not in the 3,000 camels or 500 yoke of oxen or the 500 asses, brothers and sisters. But his uh, trust, his identity was in God. Satan had made a mistake. He thought Job's identity was based on what he had or his money, but Job's identity was actually rooted in his relationship with God. So even though Job lost everything, he lost everything that he had. He didn't, it didn't stop him from worshiping God. And I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through, don't allow it to stop you from worshiping God. Job never lost his faith. Instead, he maintained his integrity. And as a result, God richly rewards Job by doubling his material possessions and giving him more children and allowing him to have a long and prosperous life. Would God do anything less for you, pleasant parishioner or our partner? Brothers and sisters, would God do anything less for those of you who are in virtual land if you're just willing to trust in God? Therefore, when you don't understand what is going on, trust God. When you can't see the way, trust God. When you're in the midst of sorrow, trust God. When you are confused, trust God. When you're overwhelmed, trust God. Brothers and sisters, 
The psalm already says, says, trust God and don't acknowledge your own ways, but allow God to lead you to where God wants you to be. Whatever strength, wisdom, comfort, guidance or help you may need, you can trust God. God might not explain why you are going through. But God will be there to get you through. Brothers and sisters, trust in God. Trust in God with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your path. Brothers and sisters, the virtual door to God's house is open. The virtual door to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church is open. Um, there are a couple of ways you can join us uh, while, while we are virtual at this time. And I want to share with you those ways. Um, you can, uh, brothers and sisters, you can uh, call into our church office at 314-535-7548. Or you can send us an email at um, uh, ghpruitt at gmail.com. ghpruitt at gmail.com and you can leave either a voicemail or an email but either way if you leave either one of those we will return a response uh, as soon as possible you are important to us uh, the door of the church is open the door of the church is open I can hear uh, the praise team singing uh, in my divine mind's uh, ear of imagination, I can sing hear I can hear the saints singing. I will trust in the Lord with all my heart. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Brothers and sisters, trust in God uh, because God is worthy of your trust. We thank you for tuning in today. Also, brothers and sisters, we are thankful for any of our guests uh, who have come by uh, to be in worship with us virtually. Uh, you could have worship with anyone globally at this point uh, in time, but you decided to tune in with Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, and for that, we are thankful. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. And when you get tired of being a guest, you can become a member. God bless you. God bless you. Also, brothers and sisters, we want to um, thank all of you who have been faithful in your generosity and faithful in your giving to God. Um, I always am reminded of Proverbs 3, uh, uh, 3 and 9, where it says, um, uh, honor the Lord uh, with your uh, finances. Honor the Lord with the first fruits. Uh, of your income. Uh, honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruit of your income. Brothers and sisters, uh, we thank God for those of you who are continuing to be uh, faithful in your giving. Uh, we appreciate you for being faithful in your giving, brothers and sisters. Uh, thank you, Deborah, uh, for that encouragement. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the encouragement. Uh, we thank God for all of you who are, have continued to um, uh, be faithful in uh, participating in our worship services. God bless you. God bless you. And the way you can give, if you want to be uh, uh, generous to the church, you can give a check or a money order. A check or a money order. Uh, you can send it to 1220 R E B G H. Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Uh, you can send a check or a money order there. Again, it is 1220. R-E-V-G-H, Pruitt Place, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Uh, amen. Or for those of you who are technologically savvy, someone perhaps can post it in the comments. You can give uh, at www 
www.pgmbcstl.org www.pgmbcstl.org you can give that you can go there and brothers and sisters once you go on to our website you can find the area uh, that uh, says giving click click on that tab and brothers and sisters, you can give there electronically. Again, we are thankful. We are thankful. We are thankful for you sharing with us on today. We are thankful for you sharing with us on today. With that being said, brothers and sisters, I pray uh, that uh, this um, worship service has been inspiring. I pray that this worship service has been um, encouraging, and I pray that this worship service has been a worship service that has invoked you to live a life that is pleasing in the eyesight of God. I am thankful that we are virtual together. Uh, with that being said, brothers and sisters, I look forward to seeing you again. Let us pause for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for our virtual listeners. I, we thank you for our virtual viewers. God, we ask now that you have mercy upon them. Touch each and every one of them and wherever they are. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we ask that you protect the police officers uh, uh, and namely those who are a part of our church and those who serve in the St. Louis uh, metropolitan area. God, we ask that you have mercy uh, upon our, our law enforcement officers. God, we ask that you have mercy uh, upon our chief. Uh, God, we ask that you uh, bless them and protect them and keep them, keep a hedge of protection around them. And God, all of our pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, whatever they are facing, God, walk with them, talk with them, embrace them, affirm them, tell them that they are your own. God, in the name of Jesus, whatever they face in life, God, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you be their protection. Now unto you, uh, a God who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you till we meet again. God bless you.